Hey folks, Fernando doing another video for the Modern Survivalist. In this video, I'm going to be going through some practical advice in terms of safety on the streets in case you get mugged, robbed, gunpoint. You just don't want to, you know, make that situation even worse than it is. Maybe you're traveling and you don't have any other a tool to defend yourself and you have to deal with that in a more improvised manner. So I'm going to be going through that, some advice for the holidays in case you're traveling and such and you don't have the things you usually have on you. And also, before I get started with the video, I want to thank everyone everyone that has subscribed to the channel, I'm fortunate to have great followers here, so really appreciate you folks, especially everyone that comments in the video, you know, for the um, the, the analytic of the algorithm of, of YouTube and such, thank you very much. If you haven't subscribed to the channel yet, do so. Hit the notification bell button so as to get, you know, notifications from following videos, and if you're interested in this sort of thing, you have my books as well. Most of the stuff that I'm going to be covering in this video is straight out street survival skills, which is my latest book regarding regarding a lot of practical advice on a number of, uh, of things regarding survival and preparedness in the more practical manner, right? Um, the economic stuff, the modern survival manual surrounding the economic collapse and bugging out and relocating, unfortunately, something that a lot of people are considering these days. Anyway, let's get to it. So, uh, this video is straight out of my Spanish channel. My Spanish channel has over 200,000 followers. People that are in the Spanish community in Latin America, especially, uh, really appreciate all of this stuff because they live through this all the time. That's my people. That's where I'm from, right? And a lot of folks in, in the United States are into survival preparedness but don't have the need to apply a lot of this all the time. So when people in the Spanish channel ask about stuff, I really try to do it in the English one as well because I know it's important things to keep in mind. So one of the videos I analyzed recently was about a couple that were, you know, uh, mugged when arriving to a friend's house, I believe, and the guy it ended up fighting with a with a mugger and then ended up getting shot. It wasn't clear if he was, you know, he was asking for the wallet and when he gave the wallet he started, you know, engaging the guy. But anyway, someone commented that a very good idea is to have a throwaway wallet. And yes, it is. It's actually a very good idea. Um, you don't always uh, find people doing that though. It's actually still quite rare. And that means that a criminal, someone that's mugging you, if you're visiting family, if you're traveling, or if you happen to live in a in a more dangerous city or even a not so dangerous one these days things are quite um, you know complicated everywhere so still a, a, a good piece of advice in my case I live in a very safe place and these things rarely ever happen you know a gun a, people getting mugged at gunpoint is really not a thing around here so most of all, of all this is something for me when I'm traveling so when I'm going somewhere where I know it's a bit more dangerous I will have a throwaway wallet something I Actually, this same one. This is the one I've been using when going to such places. So, a couple of tips here. See how these three kind of look the same. This this one has very little wear. This one is brand new and was never used at all. This one has been used and it shows. You want something that shows that it has been used. One of the things we do naturally is associate weight with value. So throw a good amount of coins in there so as to hey yeah that that has something in there. If you're getting mugged and you, the criminal picks this up, yeah he feels that there's something. Doesn't matter what it is, but it, the instinctive thing is to associate something with value. If there's emptiness, if there's lack of weight, there's, you know, even if though you have a, maybe a, a 200 bucks in, in there, this will feel in that instinctive moment as, you know, better for the mugger, right? Um, now, dragging around a wallet that you're not actually using, it's kind of a, you know, drag, but uh, what I've been doing myself is keeping you know my real wallet and this is the like the throwaway wallet with some change and a few bills in there. Don't print fake money. That's actually a serious uh, crime. I believe it's a federal crime and you have the the secret service going after you. Uh, most countries that's exactly the case. It's very much um, illegal to uh, print money. Just throw a few lower denomination bills and that will allow you to use your spare wallet or throwaway wallet. And something that you bring out just to pay for stuff, you know, a little pocket change kind of thing. You're buying a Coke, water, a sandwich, you know, whatever it is, you're using some of those coins. You use it mostly like a coin purse, right? So that way you're not carrying something you're not actually using and you find more purpose in it. That's, you know, always a, a good thing. And in case the, the wallet is also snatched from your hand, that's also something that happens, especially in more dangerous places. If you're, you know, you're buying a, a bottle of water, right? Because you're 
you're doing touristy stuff and you're paying for a bottle of water on the street, someone snatches it while and runs. Well, you know, you don't even have to bother. He just took maybe 20, 30 bucks that you have in there. That's all. Okay, no problem. Uh, that would be in case of, uh, in, in terms of wallet. In terms of cell phone, the typical thing is, you know, give me your wallet, give me your cell phone. Okay, you have a throwaway phone. Now, you could go with something like this. This Nokia is actually a great little phone. I love it. This one is one of those older Galaxy S3. These days, most phones kind of look the same. They're all like a big screen. And even, especially with, um, you know, with, with one of these cases, especially a black case, you will not tell one newer phone from the other. They're all kind of the same thing. And definitely a, a, a mugger will not. Hey, what model is this? You know, they just ask for your phone, your wallet. Okay, dude, there you go. Have a great day. You know, that's kind of the thing you want to go with. Um, in terms of, of pocket change, one of the things I wrote about right here is the possibility of making one of these um, pocket, one of these bags for your for your coins. And this is simply a piece of leather folded in half, stitched and just cut so as to fit. And it can actually be used as a very effective blackjack or zap. The, a, a zap is simply a, a you know a piece of leather with some usually lead and it is extremely effective. Uh, this thing, as you see it right now, with a, just a little bit of momentum, it really hurts your hand. With a little bit of intent, you're gonna be cracking bone. It has been used by police in the 50s. It was in fact so effective that it ended up getting banned because cops would use it so as to, you know, calm down someone and in fact break his skull with, you know, even without having that much of, a, of an intention, it's so effective because of the applied physics to it that it can easily crack someone's skull and you have it in your hand it is perfectly legal you can take it in a plane and if you ever need it you have it there and it is super effective make sure it's leather if it's anything you know some of these uh, stuff they made of you know other you know uh, cotton fabric or whatever because of the force applied it's going to be breaking especially with those coins in there you want this to be leather so follow the tips from from the book okay so in terms of watch another thing that criminals usually go for is a you know nice watch this one is a little bit too shiny maybe for in some of the more dangerous parts of the world usually we'll want to go with something like this and these are all kind of like black watches but they're not all the same this one actually I, I used this a lot in Argentina for a long time until I realized it's a limited edition and by far the most expensive I think it goes like for 300 bucks or more maybe 400 don't even remember right now but this one I used for a long time it's just a black watch, but it's one of those uh, rare cases where it's more than it actually seems. Then you have these are options. This is a, a Sunto Core, great watch, but again, a black watch. It's not a shiny one. Doesn't attract that much attention. Um, and then you have some of the cheaper watches out there. This is a, a G-Shock, which is a great watch. I paid like 40 bucks for it. It's, it's really not all that expensive. This is one of my uh, older son's watch. It's a, a Casio. It's solar though, not even G-Shock. So it's pretty affordable. He used it for a very long time, still used it. And it's so messed up. It's been all over and he used it for absolutely everything. Um, it's already a kind of banged up and even the, the the plastic you know thing that keeps this in place is gone so he's using a little string in there I you know he has other nicer watches so I told him you know you look kind of like a bum start wearing something nicer but this is one of those watches where if a criminal sees it he's probably not going to be all that interested in and if he is you know it's really worth nothing and he's definitely not going to be selling it for much of a uh, of a um, you know um, of a deal um a couple other things, if you have the option of carrying pepper spray, especially these days, when traveling, visiting places that you're not all that used to, go with Sabre Red. I leave the link below, I still think you can buy it in Amazon, we still have a little bit of that freedom left. I'll leave the links for my books as well, guys, really, if you're interested in this sort of stuff, you will definitely find those useful. And one of the things you can actually take on most, uh, I mean, planes without any problem is a flashlight. The flashlight can be very useful, especially if it's a thousand lumens or 
or more and this kind of form factor, don't go with the aggressive one. You'll have the TSA guys up your ass and bitching about that being a weapon. This, believe me, I've seen it myself, it can be very effective. It is metal against bone and it's gonna be cracking a skull rather easily. It's gonna be cutting the skin of a, of a, of a head very, very easily. You don't need the aggressive, marketing, cool looking, tactical flashlight. This is big enough so as to be used and this is gonna be sharp enough to cut and peel away skin from someone's scalp if you do use it like that. And if not, you have a flashlight which is still one of the most useful things you can have no matter what. Folks, that's gonna be all for now. Leaving links there for the through night. Yes, I am uh, getting some of these from the guys, but I believe it's a good brand. You know, if not, I wouldn't even mention it. So links for all of this stuff below there. Maybe a, a couple of watches there if I find something cool. See you in our next video, folks. Have a great year. See you in our next time. Bye.